Welcome back. It is no rocket science. But if India has to achieve the potential 8% economic growth, then the clear answer is big time investment in infrastructure industry. Of course, you need to get it off the ground in double quick time. Infrastructure could play a spoil sport and derail India's economic growth if it is not fixed. So how do we fix it? Sunit Maheshwari, MD and CEO of LNT Infra Finance, offers some practical solution. Take a look. Sunit, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, Sunit, I may begin by asking you, has the FM pressed the right button for infrastructure sector in this budget? I think he had limited elbow room to do too much. But with that, he has definitely given the signals. My own sense, I mean, the investment allowance, the fact that he's extended the uh, ATI thing for power sector, the he's announced, he, yeah, he's announced something for, I don't think there are solutions complete, but there are signals. The road regulator, the fact that PPP in coal sector, these are all signals. I think the problems more with power sector were not so, the, so much in the realm of the budget but more in the realm of implementation. So what are the area you see it should be immediately addressed, you're saying, outside the budget? The first thing is to focus on stalled projects. And uh, if you look at uh, why these projects are stalled, there are either some policy in Broglio, there's it's either coal or there is also a payments crisis, you know, because of which uh, existing projects are not going off, new projects investments are not happening. So, I, you know, in the area payment of payment crisis from the government has to pay all government the government paying to private sector. I understand that about a lakh and a half crores of sort of dues are there to private sector, both in electricity, roads, and all other. So that's a huge number. Yeah, I, I don't know whether it kind of correlates to the fact that there was expenditure control and probably 1% deficit has been brought down from a pers uh, and there is some mix up in this in terms of numbers. But clearly, from a sector point of view, there is a liquidity crisis in people who are infrastructure players and that is coming in from the fact that payments haven't happened and therefore their investment sentiment is also dampened. So you get that back, money starts coming back into some of the projects that are not getting implemented because these corporates don't have money to put in equity of their under implementation projects. And with foreign investors kind of dried up with India, so I think the only place they can actually go for raising cash is their own internal accruals, which are not happening. So I think the first thing is to de-bottleneck cash flows within the infrastructure sector in the companies and that will bring back the sentiment. The second thing I think FM is already doing, which is to attract the foreign investors. And I think we need to give that confidence over a period of time in terms of how things would pan out. The other is land related uh, acquisition, land acquisition related policy. Has this not been fixed, land acquisition? Very the, typically, the, I was told about, say, as of December 2012, six sectors accounted for 80% of the stall projects. You are absolutely right on that. And most of them are due to either land acquisition, land, coal linkages, coal, and mining sectors. And mining, I mean, in the case of spectrum issue, in the case of telecommunications spectrum yeah, actually, problem. So how do you fix this problem actually? These are all implementation issues. And therefore, they cannot be solved only by the budget. They have to be solved by administrative action. So, do you feel that infrastructure sector should be kept out of the purview of the budget? I don't think we can completely avoid that. Let's look at budget has two, indi uh, two per perspectives. I think for, for India as an economy, it has become an instrument of signal of government thinking on, on the economy and other fronts. And I think it's important to do that. The second part is, uh, let's say, fiscal measures tax and other measures mm. where they are to be tweaked and I think that's a continuous process that has to happen. That's the primary purpose of the budget. But the additional thing that it arrives at, which is what I was telling is that it's seen as a signal, it is seen as an indicator or shaping the uh, go uh, governments and the markets, I mean, governments thinking on economic policy, True. how they are going to do. So let me take you away to the global scene. What I find out, found out is now the Indian project mostly, the infrastructure, 41% always face a cost overrun and about 82% face time overrun. This does not happen in China, Germany, USC. Am I right in saying that? They are able to complete a power project in three years time in China. In India it takes five to seven years. And road project we have seen, highway project we have seen, there are various uh, hurdles there. So how do you fix it actually? What I would say is that we probably spend lesser time doing project planning, pre-project planning. Okay. 
true. Whereas most of the other governments or the other economies, they spend a little more time on the pre-project planning phase. And a lot of risks and a lot of issues are thought through at that forum. So what happens in the Indian situation is when you do not, you implement some of these things in a hurry and then you come across that problem. At a later stage, it is very difficult for the government to decide, is it the developer who is asking it this leeway because of his profit motive or is it the project really needs it? If you have thought through some of these issues uh, with, in respect of this, then the chances of cost overrun and things like that happening is going to be lesser. There are enough, you know, if we decide that we, in India we have something called the Nadkarni Committee norms for yeah. project overruns. Now, very few projects actually implement that methodology for uh, working out the cost, this thing, because the cost of the project suddenly goes up and therefore you, you know, as a desire, since you want private sector initial, this thing participation to happen, you're worried that you might scare the private sector guys or you might scare or they might ask for, they might not uh, come up, come forward or the viability might suffer. But I think it is very important for us to get private sector involved in infrastructure simply because of the the good management that they might bring both in project implementation and maybe in the revenue collection or at least ensuring revenue collections are plugged wherever there are toll revenues or things like that. So it is important from a country as a whole get a that we get private sector participating and that we create uh, structures, institutions in such a manner that it infuses more confidence. If it means that we have to give them some support in terms of viability gap funding, uh, or so, we should go ahead and do it because uh, we are asking the private sector to come and do and support the government and nation building. And I see no reason why we should not be, so we should be fixing our project cost estimation in a very most professional way, uh, spend enough time on project planning and you know land acquisition issues. You can, you can work on some of these issues in advance. The other very important thing which the government has been toying and I, I, I would be very happy if they implement it. In the case of UMPPs they did, they created SPVs, they got all the government clearances and then they went for private sector participation. Because getting all these… Well, I think most of the UMPPs are suffering because of again coal problem. Yeah, that's, a diff yeah. that's a different problem. But is what, SPV what a mandatory to set up for infrastructure company? Or is no, it, it is not mandatory. But I think for larger infrastructure project, this seems to be a good idea. Because land acquisition, getting all government, forest, all these cl environment clearances, etc. So that's not the core competence of private sector. And you get that into the SPV, the government organizes, gets the private sector. Private sector's capability is to manage capital, manage people, uh, run up op operation more efficiently, do better okay. project management. Okay. And so let them do what they are best at. So this SPV theory which has been floated around, I hope, uh, we, we see more projects happening through that. Phase. So, if you were to, if I were to ask you, what are three or four things that need fixing on a priority basis? Do there's a general feeling that infrastructure industry could play a spoil sport and derail the India's growth story? So, if you were to fix three or four things, what would be a priority? Be? The first is uh, uh, the government to, uh, and the FM, I hope, can take a lead in terms of supporting the government in creating a framework. Uh, whereby all stalled payments okay. to private sector actually go, are cleared out quickly. Because that's the quickest way you can minimize the liquidity crisis that is there and get back investment sentiment. Second is on in respect of all the stalled projects, there are three or four things that you mentioned about. One of them is let's say coal. coal let's is, yeah. let's solve the coal problem. We, we can do PPP, but that will have medium term or long term effects we can look at some short term solutions. In it. The second is, the faster we get over this telecom imbroglio, whatever is the, yeah. is, 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 is coming out, I think is, is an important way. We need to be sensitive that yes, after all spectrum is a very good way of uh, uh, balancing the budget. But at the same time, you increase the revenue earning there, you increase telecom costs. So somewhere we have to strike the balance of saying how much we should solve the problem for once and, and get going. The sec third was uh, because of a Supreme Court action, there has been a problem with respect to all mining activity. Mining activity, yeah. I think, I think we, have to, we have to get that off the ground. It's starting to hurt 
the economy and the sectors, etc. So we need to find a way to solve the problem. I am sure we can uh, find ways to uh, uh, look at that. The, the, the fourth uh, problem is land related, wherever there are land acquisition issues. Uh, so my sense is that this cabinet committee initiative that has been thought through seems to me a very great way of solving the problem. But I would like to see this institution sitting more often because if they don't clear the projects in the neck, clear these bottlenecks in the next say four or five months, they won't see the benefits of this in this year. Do you think them kind of omnibus infrastructure ministry could work because now when we saw GMR pulling out of a road projects, Gujarat, Rajasthan, well, it was to do with the environment clearance and finally you got environment clearance after they pulled out. If the whole department, all the ministry work in a holistic fashion, it could help? Uh, my answer is a mix. It's a yes and a no in the sense, yes, there is a possibility of coalescing some of the ministries. I see no reason why we should have a separate railways ministry and a road ministry and an air. We should have a transport ministry. Looks after, after transport solutions on a holistic way, right? So I think there is a possibility of doing that coordination. Having said that, some of these p delays are not happening because of, let's say, the GMR one, etc. is simply because of the delays that are happening. Now, this could have been solved if we had done a lot of pre-project planning before you award the project. If all of these permissions, or at least a good many of these permissions, were obtained, then I think GMR wouldn't have had problems. Okay, so thanks a lot. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Great. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks a lot. Yeah. My pleasure. That was Sunit Maheshwari allaying fears and apprehension about time overruns and cost overruns endemic with infrastructure projects. His solutions are doable. With that, we come to end of this special episode on what India wants looking beyond budget. Thanks for watching CNBC TV 18.